Immediately after birth, a baby will be dried and laid directly onto mother's bare chest. They're covered with a blanket for at least an hour or until at least after the first feed. This is called skin to skin contact. You can continue doing skin to skin contact over the coming days, weeks and months. This will help calm and comfort your baby. Skin to skin contact is also vital for your baby in the neonatal unit and it is often known as kangaroo care. There is growing evidence that skin to skin helps a baby transition from the womb to the world. It helps them stay warm, eases their stress and stabilizes their breathing. It helps baby's immune system by getting mums good bacteria to protect against infection. It's important for all mothers and babies regardless of their feeding choice. Skin to skin helps the baby's weight gain and their, skin, their sleep cycles. And for you, it can help with postnatal anxiety and depression. Skin to skin releases oxytocin, which can reduce the risk of excessive bleeding. It helps your body to recover from birth quicker and helps you and your baby to build a healthy, close, loving relationship. Research has also shown that babies held on skin to skin in the first hours after birth go through nine instinctive stages, starting with the birth cry and progressing through to finding and suckling at the breast before sleeping. Unhurried and uninterrupted skin to skin in the first hours after birth provides a safe space and time for this important newborn behavior. If you're not able to have skin to skin contact straight after birth, for example, if your baby's in the neonatal unit, it is still important for you to practice as soon as you can. For babies in the neonatal unit, skin to skin helps oxygen circulate in the baby's bloodstream. It reduces their stress and helps with growth. It encourages pre-feeding behavior and improves the amount of milk produced by you for breastfeeding. And it can also reduce baby's hospital stay. In the same way that you learn about safe sleep and how to safely place a baby in a car seat, it is important to learn what safe skin to skin looks like and how to safely carry out skin to skin. This helps reduce the risk of sudden unexpected postnatal collapse. This is a rare but serious event where an otherwise well appearing baby collapses in the hours and early days after birth. We'll now meet Chiara and baby Amelia who will kindly demonstrate for us how to safely carry out skin to skin and carry out a checklist to ensure that Amelia's uh, airway is protected and the environment is safe. Chiara, thank you so much for allowing us to have this really important conversation around safe skin to skin and thank you Amelia for demonstrating the, some key features. When you hold your baby in skin to skin, the environment is almost womb-like for the baby. The temperature is just right. Your chest will help to regulate Amelia's temperature. The baby can hear your familiar heartbeat and the sound of your voice. This enhances the bonding already started in the womb. This reassuring environment keeps your baby calm and makes them feel safe, helping to regulate their heart rate, their breathing and their blood sugars. The neurons in the baby's brain are firing and wiring, and this is affecting the development of their brain in a very positive way. As we can see, Amelia is lying against Chiara's bare chest. Amelia is naked except for a nappy. And Chiara and Amelia are covered with a warm blanket to prevent Amelia from losing heat out through her body. This prone position, when the baby is lying tummy down on you, is, is only recommended in skin to skin. Um, and when you're feeling nice and awake and alert. Other things to note, so Amelia's skin is dry, including her hair. Her head is turned to one side and her face can always be seen. Amelia's mouth and nose are not covered. Amelia's neck is straight with her chin is not down on her chest and equally her head is not right back, extended right back either. So when you were learning about breastfeeding, Chiara, you, you would have heard about a baby's chin pressed in against the breast and the nose back from the breast to facilitate a lovely deep and safe latch. So Amelia's shoulders are flat against Chiara. Her chest, she's lying chest to chest with Chiara. Her arms are flexed or bent up and equally her legs are bent up. So her arms are above Chiara's breast and her legs are below Chiara's breast. Chiara herself is in a semi-reclined position at approximately 45 degrees. Chiara is awake and alert and hasn't had any medication that may make her feel sleepy. Chiara, if you had a long birth, induction, 
or if you're feeling exhausted um, or in pain or if you just don't feel ready yet for skin to skin your partner or support person if they're with you can do safe skin to skin with Amelia and if they're not here you can place Amelia back in the cot dress her up and place her safely on her back until you're feeling ready and alert to resume skin to skin. Cara we're now going to discuss how you can keep an eye on Amelia when to ensure that she's having safe skin to skin. So we'll start with her skin colour. You can see that her colour is nice and pink. If she has any colour changes, for example, if she becomes pale or dusky in appearance, call for a healthcare professional without delay. If your baby had a darker skin tone, we'd be advising mothers to look at the baby's nail beds or their lips inside their mouth or their tongue for colour changes and if they were worried about colour changes again to call for help. So the next thing we're going to talk about is her breathing. So you're, this lovely close position, you're lying chest to chest. So you're aware of the lovely rise and fall of Amelia's chest as she's breathing and we can notice that she's not making any grunting noises. We're next going to observe her activity. Is she in a quiet alert state? Is she sleeping? <laughs> Even a baby that's sleeping will respond to your touch. Then her tone, we're going to talk about her muscle tone. So when her arms are bent up like this and her legs are bent up, we, we know that she's got good muscle tone. So her temperature, your skin will keep Amelia's body warm at the front. And we place a blanket over both of you so she doesn't lose heat out through her back. If Amelia was smaller or the room was cold, we'd consider putting a hat on her head as well when in hospital. You won't need a hat at home. If you're worried that Amelia feels too hot or too cold, don't be afraid to call the midwife looking after you to come and check Amelia. This is an amazing time for you and Amelia to enjoy together. It's best if you have any, your mobile phone or any other devices, leave them up on the bed table or locker so they don't distract this wonderful time. A midwife or your partner can help you if you need to change position when Amelia shows signs of readiness to feed. So the environment, we're now going to talk about um, some aspects of the environment to ensure that it's a safe environment. So the lighting is sufficient that you can always see that Amelia's colour is nice and pink. It's a safe environment, there's no risk of Amelia falling, she's not going to get trapped in any body parts or in any part of the bed either. Staff will be around at intervals to keep an eye on both of you when you're in the hospital, um, but if at any stage they're not around and you need assistance, again, just use the call bell. If you're at home and concerned, Seek the attention of a healthcare professional without delay. Skin to skin contact is not just for newborn babies. It can be a great way for you and your partner to bond with and soothe your baby throughout their early life. Hopefully the checklist we've gone through today will help you practice skin to skin safely and confidently, both in the hospital and at home, and help you build that loving, close relationship with your baby.